So we're going to start with this piece here. Standing it up, you simply take the two magnet uprights and put those in place like so. You could glue this if you want, you don't really have to. And this piece will go in the end. I'm going to hold off on putting this piece in, however, because I'm going to attach the brushes on here just before. Now the um, armature goes together like this. Pick up the little M. Oops, the little M. And you simply hold it upside down. Slide these two pieces on it. Just like so. Again, you could put a bit of glue if you want. So it'll look like that eventually. Then this little piece goes on the end. So I'll just put that on there. If it's a should snap in just like so. So there's four pieces for this and four pieces for that. After you put your uh, uh, armature together you just slide the shaft in just like so. So you need this little hoop here so keep that. That was holding my brush wire together. So the uh, there's two pieces of wire in here so I'm just going to pull them apart and there they are and using the sandpaper I'm going to clear the insulation off of the ends of these two pieces of wire. So you grab the sandpaper and you simply pull like that across the wire and what will happen is the the insulation will come off the wire. So do that to about two inches on each side. So you'll be doing it four times, one at each end of each of these wires. Alright, so I've got two pieces of this wire here and the ends are nice and clear on there. So this is the brush holder right here. So we're gonna, there's a big hole and there's some little holes. We're gonna use the little holes to fasten the wire. So I'm going to Over here. So this will be your terminal to attach your battery to eventually. So you may want that sticking out a little. And then the inside now is where we're going to start stitching this together. So I'm going to put, put this through the hole like so. So it's sort of like sewing. And we're going to go through all three holes so it'll be stable in place, pulling it tight like that. Uh, it's still kind of wobbly, so I'm going to feed it again. And eventually you want to exit right next to the to the large hole, just like that. So that's sort of stitched on there now, and it exits right by the large hole. So what we're going to do is put a pencil, any old pencil, in to the hole, just like so and we're going to wrap the pencil with the wire like so. I'm pushing the wire downward so it's all the way on the pencil all the way down. In this case I'm wrapping it so that after I finish it'll be facing upwards along this shaft right here so this isn't quite far enough so I'm going to keep going until I'm almost out of wire and I'm left with just enough to stick upward to form a brush. So. I'll Make sure the brush is going to be straight, so I'm straightening the last piece of wire. And I'm going to twist it now until it's facing up, or roughly up. There. So what I've got now is if you have a look, there's like a little spring. So the, the wire is attached, then there's a little spring, and then the little, little piece of wire is sticking straight up. And after I pull the pencil out, everything sort of behaves, and it's facing up. So I repeat the same step to install the other brush. So first, make sure you exit again right next to the hole. So I'm just doing the last stitch right next to the hole. And um, okay, so I've exited next to the hole, as I mentioned. So I'm putting in the pencil. And you, you wind this the other way. So I'm winding upward towards what will be the shaft of the motor and we're just going to keep winding this and I'm bunching the wire downward onto the pencil like that until well you want enough sticking up to reach maybe higher than the brush or higher than the motor shaft we've now got the two springs on there 
and they're facing sort of upward. I like them so they're, in theory, they would lean against the shaft, which will eventually be right there. Just so that's what it'll look like when it's ready for installation. So now I'll come back here and we'll simply press it in place. There. And there it is, two little brushes sticking up. So this piece is pretty well complete. Set that aside. Now we've um, put this together without glue. Again, you can glue it if you want. But we're now going to wind the, uh, the coils onto this thing and also add the commutator or the connector for it. So you'll find... So just before putting this on here, I'm going to clear the end of this wire. I'm going to clear about 6 inches or 15 centimeters or so of the wire, so a nice long chunk. I'm going to use the uh, sandpaper. Uh, be careful with this wire. This wire is easy to break. So I'm not applying very much pressure. I'm just sliding along there and taking away the enamel coating of the wire until the um, copper is exposed. Okay, so I've cleared a nice long piece of this uh, thin wire. Now we're going to wind it. This is the fun part. So we're going to start with uh, feeding the wire into one of the little holes at the end here. This is just to help secure it just like that. Once it's through the hole you can maybe bend it off. Later when this disc goes on it will close against the uh, wire and help hold it in place. For now we don't need it. So uh, the wire is in place and now I'm going to wrap around these funny looking posts right here. Um, I'm just going to go around there like about three times. Uh, try to make sure that the wire is in the little notches. So I'm going around three times or so, just like that. Then I'm going to cross over to the other side and do the same thing. Notice that I'm going to do this twice, once here and once there. The wire is being wound on the same piece of wood. Don't go over to the other side of the, the, the other piece of wood. Just that one piece. So then I'm going to wrap about three times around those notches again. There. So I've wrapped three times after going in the hole. I wrapped three or four times on there. Three or four times on there. On the same face of wood. And from here we're going to wind these big coils onto here. Two, three, four, five. So I'm going to wind this about 200 times. Six, seven, maybe 180 to 200 times. Just like that. Now I was turning in a certain direction. You got to keep track of that. And we're going to wind the other side. And it has to be wound in the same direction. So if I was about to wind this over there, going in that direction, I bring the wire over and I continue the same direction. And now I wind this side of the motor. You want to wind it roughly the same as you wound the other side so it will be balanced. So I'll do mine about 180. There. So when you get all your turns on there it'll look roughly like the other side. Now the last thing we're going to do here is I want to you have some wire left over maybe. But I'm going to cut this off so that there's a nice long piece left over and I'm going to use that for winding onto your uh, the other side, the other plate in the same way we did the other one. Uh, just before doing that I'm going to clear the wire though. So I'm going to remove some insulation. Again, be very careful on this side because if you pull this and break it you need to unwind some of your turns on there and start over. So I'm just going to very carefully do this for a while until all the enamel is cleared away from that end of the wire. I'm doing a good long segment. Maybe it's 10 inches or 25 centimeters or whatever. Just a long. My wire looks pretty shiny, so that's probably about right. So uh, from here, I'm just going to go and hook on and start going around these little posts on there. I'm going to do about three times, then switch to the other side and do three times. Again, be sure that you're winding inside the little notch. Okay. 
Okay, so I've wound both of those. I'm going to remove the extra wire now with a pair of scissors or a knife like this. Whoops. Try to break that off. You can snap the wire, but uh, you, if you use a, um, a cutting tool, you'll get it more accurate where you're breaking it. Okay, so the last part of the wire is we're going to feed it in that hole just like we started the other one and pull it out. So that'll help secure it. So this little plate can go down against it and you can remove the extra wire if you want. So there's maybe only two little pieces of wire left sticking out. The other little circle goes on there. So there's your completed uh, armature. This section here is called commutator. The whole assembly is armature. And this back piece you could call that the rotor, and those are electromagnets on the rotor. And they're, these connectors here are going to help get power up to them. So we want to take the um, platform, and you want to put that in the platform. But the catch is you would like for these brushes or wires to touch against there. So there, we've cleared that wire so it's nice and shiny, and we've cleared the wire here so it can make a connection. So I'm just going to make sure my brushes are roughly straight up. So this one here is facing maybe a bit the wrong way. So I'm just going to very carefully bend it so they're both straight up. And I'm going to put the uh, whole assembly in between. So it's in between the two brushes. So I'm sort of separating the brushes so that they're on either side of it. And then snap in place. Now when you snap it, push downward very carefully and it should be sort of freewheeling but the brushes should still be touching so let's check and see if this motor runs oh one more thing uh, magnets so your kit should have some magnets if they're different sized put the thicker ones inside so here's how we're going to put one magnet um, you can just let them clamp on there you go see so there the magnets are actually being held in place by their own magnetism. Now the next magnet, it actually matters which way. It doesn't matter which way the first one goes on, except maybe if there's a larger one, face it inward. But the trick is, you don't know which way to put it, this way or that way. The way you find out, you bring the magnet over and you see if it's attracted or if it's repelling. See? That's attracted right there. I can feel it pulling. So I keep it in the same orientation and I bring it over to the other side. So that's the correct orientation. So the magnets, in theory, if they could reach each other, they want to stick to each other. So once it's in place, I can place, put the other one. Oops. Uh, don't do it that way. <laughs> um, this is a problem with these magnets is they're very strong. Okay, you got to start over. Um, so we put this here, see if it's attracting. No, there now it's attracting. So we bring it over to the other side. Then the other magnet will help hold it. There we go. Make sure there's enough clearance. The closer this is, the better. So if you wanted, you could take both magnets on one side and it would be even closer to the rotor. Okay, so let's add some electricity. So this is a battery pack um, which I, um, you need to get separately. You could make this or uh, you just attach all the wire, the batteries with wires and eventually you have two wires coming out. So I'm going to use these two jumpers here to just connect the, uh, the whole thing. So I'll put the green one and the red white one on there and then I'm going to connect to the motor here like so. You could solder this or twist the wires together. It's important you don't short it so keep these apart like so. We put this in and we try to see if it's going to run and it should. You have to make sure you have it connected. If it doesn't run right away, always disconnect the battery and then figure out what's wrong because while the battery is connected you could be draining power and um, or shorting it. So my brushes are not connecting just yet, so I'm going to bend them. Just play around with them until they're in position up there. Power back on. Give it a push. So you may need to push your motor. So that's just barely running. So let's see here. Just barely running. Have to make sure you have good batteries as well. See, so we're barely, barely running. So I'm just connecting the battery. Okay, what to check on this? I'm going to lift it out of here, and we're going to go over the things that you can check. You can check that the magnets are correctly aligned. You do this by taking one and making sure it's attracted to the other side in that orientation. 
make sure the brushes are not touching each other. Um, they won't, in my case, they look like they might be um, when, the, when the piece is not installed. But make sure they're never crossed. Okay, now when I cleared the wire off with the sandpaper, it's possible I left some behind. So what you can do to be sure is you can scrape that very carefully to make sure that you can get a connection to the bare copper wire. Just like that. I'm just making sure I've got a connection there. All the way around. And I'll try this one a little. There, scrape that a little bit. Maybe we get a better connection. And I'm going to bend this now to make sure that it wants to lean against the connectors. Make sure it's straight up. Like so. Okay, let's try that again. I'm making sure the batteries are not connected, of course, while we're playing around here. I've just removed the battery, that's how I know we're clear. We're going to put that in between. Bring the wires out so they can connect. Make sure it turns freely. Okay, we have a problem because when I turn it over, the you see the brush is trying to go that way, so I'm going to bend it a little. Just like so. That's more like it. It turns freely and we have a connection. So, back to power. There it goes. You may notice that um, once it's running, that if you sometimes change the pressure of the brushes, it'll speed up. So there's some optimal amount of pressure that's required there. So what I like to do is you take this little uh, hoop that was helping hold the wire together can't find mine. So you can take this little hoop here and you can put that on there as a brush tensioner. So here's how you first shut the motor off and you want to make uh, two little notches on there so that there's a place that so this will stay in place. So to do that very carefully just bend it so that it's a little notch without disturbing the adjustment very up too much of the brush. Again, so just notching that out so that if I put this on, in theory, it can't fall off. There. There. Might run there. So let's put power back. Brushes. So if we uh, uh, start the motor up, it should run uh, a little bit stronger with the brush tensioner. If you want, you could add a bit of glue so the shaft doesn't slip. This shaft is slipping. No big deal, though. 